Hello, uh, this is my senior capstone proposal presentation. The title of my project is Navigating Grief for College Students Utilizing Creative Methods. I am Anna Temple, a transfer student from Leeward Community College, which I have attended from 2020 to spring 2022 and earn as an associate's degree in design and animation. I attended IAA High School where I graduated with the class of 2020. I am a creative media major and the concentration I am in is in general creative media. For my executive summary, so first we have the thesis statement. The basis is the evaluation of grief models and building upon them to better accommodate contemporary college students who are struggling with grief. Next, we have the plans for the senior capstone project, which is essentially the creation of a social media account on Instagram made to support and foster a safe space for grieving college students. As for the third point, we will delve into the reasoning behind the research of grief and college students and why I chose the topic. Um, last, I will address the significance of the project and how it would be able to benefit contemporary college students today using research. My thesis statement is evaluating and improving upon grief models in the context of applying them to contemporary college students can lead to overall improved coping techniques for students through creative methods utilizing technology. As for the objective and rationale, so there are three points or three main points, personal experience, research conducted, and the main objective. The two main points being personal experience and the research conducted for the rationale, and the last point being the objective. So the reasoning behind the first point is because as a college student myself, there are major events or experiences that I have faced in my educational and personal life. It was difficult to balance life and academic responsibilities in a time of grief or loss, which made me realize the lack of resources for students who have gone through uh, the same thing. I felt inspired to research a topic that might connect with other students. The second reason is a result from prior research conducted, which gave me a newfound knowledge on how grief models are misinterpreted in pop culture, as well as how people may be misguided when coping with grief when looking into online resources. Understanding grief models and building upon them may give others an idea of better models that best help with college students today, especially since grief models that I have researched were created in the mid to late 1900s. It let me know of the importance for the need of credible resources for contemporary students to use today. The objective is to foster a safe space for contemporary college students. There is a lack of resources online or safe spaces for them to actively grieve. Furthermore, there could be spaces developed online with reliable sources students can cross-check that may help them get a better understanding on how to overcome grief in a healthy manner. Creating a space or an account that encourages college students and giving suggestions in how they could go about their grieving process could go a long way in overcoming or navigating their grief. So for my senior capstone plans, um, my plan for the senior capstone is to create an Instagram social media campaign account to inform, bring awareness to, and give support to grieving college students with the use of infographics varying in photo and video formats using information from trusted resources. These resources will be directly linked in the caption for users to cross-check themselves. The purpose of the social media account is to give support to grieving college students through online resources and suggest our suggested methods on how to cope in a healthy manner, but to also provide a space for them. The goal of the social media account is to have an active presence, meaning at least three to four posts weekly. These posts may consist of informational infographics, short form video infographics, ranging from 30 seconds to one minute, depending, coping methods and resources, suggestions on how to cope with grief and clarifying misinformation on existing grief models. So the first point of significance would essentially be bringing awareness to grieving college students and informing them on different potential methods of navigating their grief, which is essentially, um, which, is which is essential in a college student's personal growth. 
The future implications that come with it is steering college students away from mental health issues, depression, and anxiety. Furthermore, educating students on healthy methods of grieving could help students avoid complicated grieving, otherwise known as CG, or post-traumatic growth. So here we have two graphs. The first graph shows the percentage of mental health clinicians who have had college student patients during the 2022 to 2023 academic school year in the United States and reported the students' top concerns. The top concerns are shown as anxiety and depression, majority due to relationship problems and family problems, although grief and loss also seem to be a big issue, making up 3.2% of the overall graph. As we see in the second graph, based on a survey conducted in the United States, a total of 41% of college students had symptoms of depression that stemmed from various reasons, ranging from loss of interest to thoughts about death. Depression may occur when prolonged or complicated grieving happens with college students, which could be detrimental to their mental health. According to Mark D. Milleran, an associate professor of psychiatry at Psychiatric Institute Clinic, he reported that complicated grief, otherwise known as CG, is a syndrome that affects 10 to 20 percent of grievers regardless of age due to avoidance of expressing their sadness and the inability to accept their loss. The second point of significance is being able to evaluate and acknowledge how existing grief models can be improved upon, which could lead to more flexible grieving and more solutions, healthy coping strategies and methods for college students today. The future implications of this point are that grieving models are outdated, primarily created in the mid to late 1900s and should be consistently improved or worked upon with our changing society to fit with contemporary college student needs. Here we see three grief models in the order of its creation. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's Five Stages of Grief created and introduced in 1969. William Warden's Four Tasks of Mourning, created in 1982, and Straub and Schutz's Dual Process Model of Coping with Bereavement, created in 1995. There is no explicit mention on what specific methods can be utilized other than the implied loss-oriented and restoration-oriented guidelines. The Dual Process Model proposed, nor are there specifications on how these models can be used to benefit college students specifically. These pre-existing models could be built upon helping college students to better navigate their grieving process by incorporating these ideologies. As you can see here, the three models were developed from the 1960s to 1990s and could be considered outdated, as mentioned previously. And as seen in the visuals, or in the visuals, each model is vague in describing each process, which could be argued that it can be more easily implemented in various situations. However, building However, building upon these models in the context of helping grieving college students may help them may help them become better guidelines for students rather than something that needs to be achieved to get over grieving. Here we have three main points with backed quotes and statistics. Potential solutions or methods could be done with writing, art therapy, and sharing memories of deceased through social media, which could help college students freely express their grief. In an excerpt from Culture and Psychology, psychologists expressed, psychologists expressed that multimodal narrative expressions can be valuable therapeutic tools in times of grief because they allow individuals and communities to explore the multifaceted layers of the grieving process. Furthermore, a study conducted in 2019 on university students showed that 43% of participants who use social media to communicate their grief 46% of participants found it helpful. There were, or there was also a survey conducted on Facebook memorial pages and its usefulness in grief expression. The study showed that 98.5% of 68 um, Facebook users recommended the use of memorial pages and groups as a way to cope with the grieving process. Additionally, a participant of the study reporting I was able to post pictures and share memories of the grandparent I lost. The third point of significance is preventing the spread of misinformation of grieving models and the misconception of the idea that there is a proper way of grieving 
or that there is a structure that an individual needs to follow to successfully overcome grief when there isn't a proper or definitive way to grieve, since individuals grieve in unique ways. The future implications of this point is to prevent recurrent misinformation and misguidance with online resources through pop culture and social media. Preventing the spread of misinformation when it comes to grief models will help college students realize that grief models are usually intended to be descriptive models and not prescriptive models based on the research I've done. To add on, they might find coping methods that best suits them without feeling restricted to the implied guidelines. Here are another three points composed of the misconcep misconceptions and the lack of warnings, cautions, and limitations of the five stages model in online sources or websites. The use of words such as stages or tasks implies linear progression. A psychology researcher mentions the use of the word stages in and of itself implies an orderly linear progression from one phase to another which has resulted in many using the model as a prescriptive guideline rather than a descriptive model. A mistaken belief in the stage model can have devastating consequences. Researchers Silver and Wortman, 2007 stated, a mistaken belief in the stage model can have devastating consequences. Not only can it lead, um, not only can it lead bereaved persons to feel that they are not coping appropriately, but it also can result in ineffective support provision by members of their social network, as well as unhealthy and potentially harmful responses by healthcare professionals. 61.1% of websites scored a mean score of 1.9 out of 12 points in criticalness, warnings, cautions, and limitations. A source mentioning in addition to warnings of rigidity are Analysis established that a number of warnings of existence, limitations, and criticisms of the fit of the five stages model were sometimes included on included on the um, sometimes included on some of the websites, albeit very infrequently. The mean score for criticalness was 1.9 out of a possible total score of 12 points. There will be a figure shown to re to represent that data in the next slide. So here are the frequencies and percentages of warnings, limitations, and criticisms of the five stages model. These range from the lack of the recurrence of stages, the set time of each stage, and the misapplication of stages of grief, et cetera. So who is the target audience? The target audience are college students in the age range 18 to 24. I'm primarily targeting younger college students since mental health issues during a critical period of development could be detrimental to personal growth in rapid transition periods and should be made aware of reliable sources and given a safe space to express the grief with other students or express that grief with other students they connect or they can connect with. Any college student who may have lost someone close to them or has experience can relate to grief in general, and college students who may be curious in processing, in processing their own or another student's grief by gaining information and finding methods or resources online. So there is no definitive solution for navigating the grieving process for a college student. But one solution could be using the digital platform Instagram as a way to contribute to the healing process of grieving individuals. This could lead to engaging um, to engaging in helpful creative resources to better navigate grief for a contemporary college student. This will be done through research-backed infographics and explicit links to sources. This includes visible cautions when explaining grief information or giving suggestions to avoid misinformation or misguidance. Uh, this would range from healthy coping suggestions, fostering a safe and reliable space for students to grieve. So in the pre-production phase, I will focus on choosing a definitive name for the Instagram account, set up a goal of weekly posts, three to four posts a week, and ensure that I'm able to with the resources found or provided. I'd, I'd also like to create mock-ups or design templates for potential posts. There's also a matter a matter of doing research on current information of coping mechanisms for college students that have worked or is working for other students. In the production phase, creating and experimenting with infographics video formats using Adobe programs such as Illustrator, Photoshop, 
Adobe After Effects or visual infographics or for visual infographics, informative coping suggestions or community engagement. Figuring out color schemes that work best for the Instagram account, account. write informative and engaging captions for the posts and being aware of the of the information being put in captions and posts and explicitly source them on posts and captions. Avoid the spread of misinformation and utilize reliable cross-checked resources. In the posting phase, I'd like to help foster a safe space for college students to share their experiences or their feelings while grieving, while grieving, which can be done by engaging with the community through comments, feedback posts, or comments and feedback posts. There's also a matter of figuring out how to reach my intended target audience. The deliverable will be an Instagram social media account consisting of custom-made infographics and existing information using research around grief, having, having the deliverable be an addition of potential helpful resources for college students struggling with grief, potential methods with, yeah. Um, Yes, and posting to encourage and posting to encourage the target audience to share their experiences or feelings of grief with other community members. Thank you. That concludes my senior capstone proposal. I appreciate you listening. Do you have any questions for me?